Hi everyone, it's Cynthia, otherwise known as Mama Mess, from Complete Not a Mess, a creative playground. And today, just in time for Halloween, I am going to show you how I made these creepy eyeballs. I'm really excited about it. I'll put everything that you need in the information box below. Let's get going. The first thing I did was divide my translucent clay into half ounce blocks. If you're using a two ounce package, you can simply cut the package into four equal parts. You'll need 10 half ounce blocks of translucent clay. Once I had the blocks divided, I tinted them with alcohol ink. For the first four block blocks, I used citron colored ink. I put four drops for the first block, eight drops for the second block, 12 drops for the third block, and 16 drops for the fourth block. For the fourth block, I also added a few drops of slate alcohol ink. I then took another block and blended it with 1 16th of a block of green clay. Then I tinted some blocks of clay with metal colored alcohol ink. I used the same system that I had used before. Four drops for the first block, eight drops for the second block, 12 drops for the third block, 16 drops for the final block, and I also added some slate colored clay, a few drops to that final block. Then I blended a block of clay with 1 16th a block of green clay and a small amount of black clay in order to get my darkest color. So I have all of my uh, sheets that I tinted with alcohol ink. I've run them through uh, my pasta machine at setting three. My pasta machine, um, the thickest setting is one and the thinnest setting is nine. So three is a little less than halfway. And I'm gonna begin with the Citron um, tinted sheets. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna stack them up so that the lightest is on the bottom. And press it down and make sure there's no um, air bubbles or anything in there and we're going to move toward the darkest and just one more here and again I'm just always making sure there's no air bubbles and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this sheet up, make it a little bit easier to work with. Move some of that scrap clay away. And again, as you can see, it goes from your lightest to darkest or darkest to lightest. And what, what this uh, stack is going to be is the inside of the eye. This darkest color is going to be next to the pupil. And this lighter color is going to be farther away from the pupil. And now that I have that stacked, I'm going to take a um, clay scraper and I'm going to just cut right into that stack. And then I'm going to heal it up again. And I'm going to cut into it some more. And you don't, um, you know, it doesn't have to be even. And after you make a few of these, you'll decide how many times you'd like to do it. Let's get it stuck back together. And 
you have some idea of what it is I'm trying to accomplish there. All right, now I'm going to move on to the uh, meadow colored clay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stack, darker side up, right against the lightest color of the meadow. And again, we'll trim it up. And once again, I'm going to just cut into it with this clay scraper. Just keep cutting into that. Now, this time I'm only going to do it one time because what's going to happen is I am going to continue stacking the metal colored clay and cutting into it. And so I'm going to get plenty of striations and you know that's really what makes this this eye look uh, realistic this iris cane look realistic I'll show you once or twice you don't have to do it so many times mm -hmm. and then just press it back together now I'll go ahead and repeat the process or you can go ahead and repeat the process with these last three colors ending with the darkest color and what you're going to wind up with is something that looks like this so there's the dark color that we started with on the bottom and I moved all the way up to um, the dark color in the, in the meadow color it doesn't look like too, too much now, but if I take a little slice from it, you can see that it really is starting to look like an iris. So once I've gotten to that point, I've stacked all my layers and cut into all my layers. Then what you do is you take this little stack and I'm going to keep it um, from here on in. I'm going to keep it with the very darkest color on the top just to stop myself from getting confused. I'm going to keep that very darkest color on top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut this in half and in half again and in half again. And I'm going to put the pieces back together but I'm going to stagger them just slightly. And that's going to give us that final, final look of, of striation that really makes this cane look um, realistic. And so again, so I'm putting it back together and I'm keeping the very darkest color at the top. You can't go wrong if you do that. And again, I'm going to get it all healed up. I'm going to roll over it a little bit. on the bottom okay and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let this cane rest and uh, probably overnight probably pop it in the fridge for about an hour um, tomorrow before I reduce it so when I come back, I'll show you how to reduce the cane and put it around the center. Okay, I left my cane rest overnight. And now what I need to do is I need to reduce this cane so that it's about 12 inches long. Now, this isn't the most precise cane 
so we don't have to um, be too, too particular with it. There's lots of videos out there on how to reduce a cane, uh, but basically what I'm going to do is squeeze in the center and then work out toward the ends until I get the cane 12 inches long. Now, once I've done that, I'll come on back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, I've reduced the cane. It's a little bit more than uh, 12 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it up. It's easier to divide a cane that's um, an even length. I'll get that end trimmed off. Straighten it out a little bit. Get that end trimmed off. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark the cane in two inch increments and I'll wind up with uh, six pieces just go ahead and get it marked oh, get this out of the way get that glare out of there and I'll go ahead and cut it all the way through we go now I've had the darkest edge on top but now I'm gonna flip them so um, you know you can see that light colored middle and the slightly dark bottom and what I'm going to do is press down on that bottom the um, sort of medium green color that's gonna go next to the pupil Just keep pressing that down and making that end more narrow. Again, this is a great cane and, and that precision isn't all that important. And in fact, you know, a little bit of deviation actually looks better. Okay, so now you can see that I've got that piece um, triangle shaped as opposed to the square shape that we started with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make all of the other pieces triangle shaped, keeping the darkest color at the top and the medium color at the bottom. And when I finish with that, I'll come back and show you how to put the cane together. Okay, so I have my two inch pieces of cane and I've shaped them all into that triangle shape. So I have the I've continued to keep the very darkest color up at the top and then I've just rolled um, a little bit of black clay out and what I'm going to do is just place these two inch pieces around the black clay and the size of that um, doesn't matter to me so much because I only use it as a placeholder I add a pupil to my eye later on and you just keep placing them like that and then eventually what happens is you get a circle and then you have to kind of just carefully roll and compress that circle so it doesn't turn into a square or a rectangle or anything like that on you. And you eventually get something like this. Now, it's my suggestion, um, this, you know, this is pretty large. It's my suggestion that you, um, you know, reduce it, but only reduce one side. You know, keep the other side as large as you can. So the way that you do that is you just, uh, you're just gonna pinch and turn and pinch and turn and what's going to happen is you know one size one side will stay nice and and wide and large for you and then the other side will just get smaller and smaller and so what you'll wind up with is um, a cane that has all different size irises for you so I'm going to go ahead and do some more reduction on this cane 
And then when I come back, we'll make an actual eyeball. So I've reduced the cane down and I've taken a few slices of the iris. And then what I did is I just molded um, with the Sculpey mold, a, a, you know, sort of an eyeball base. You could just, you know, uh, roll a ball of clay and then flatten it or cut it in half. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ball tool and I'm going to do my best to be right in the center of this eyeball. And I'm going to try to make a depression that's pretty even. And a little bit larger than my iris. And somewhat deep. And I'm going to go ahead and pick my iris up, make sure that it's still round. You know, sometimes when you slice them, they get a little bit um, out of shape. And I'm going to go ahead and place the iris right over that little depression I just made and go ahead and press it in. Now I'm just going to use my fingers to kind of press it in around the edges there. Take the smaller ball tool. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, one of the etch and pearl tools. I use either the um, largest one or the smallest one. And I have some black clay here that I've rolled out on uh, setting five on my machine. Again, the thickest setting on my machine is one. The thin thinnest setting is nine. And so this is a little bit, a little bit more than uh, halfway. And I'm going to make a little pupil. Now the reason why I like to do it this way is because I can control the size. I can have a smaller pupil or a larger pupil. I can also control the shape. You know, I can have a diamond shaped pupil for a uh, cat's eye. Or I can have a triangle shaped pupil for a, um, you know, a dragon. Now this is a slightly larger pupil. And so that's the reason why I do it that way. And I'm going to just pop that into that depression. Use a tool to make sure it's centered. And use the ball tool to just press it right into that depression. And you can also use the ball tool to um, make sure that it stays nice and round and even. Okay. All right. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cure the eye. And then when I come back, I'll show you the final steps. Once your eye is cured, um, there's really no limit to what you can do with it. You could uh, take a fine brush and some red paint and you can add veins. Um, you know, there's lots of embellishments that you can do. You could add it to, you know, a notebook or a pendant or even a pair of earrings. Um, but for your eye to look the most realistic, you have to add a little shine, um, a little bit of varnish. So I'm going to show you how I do that now. Um, but it's important to note that you would not do any of this varnishing or the resin until all of your pieces were baked. You know, if you're going to add embellishments to make a, a pendant, or a decoration, you'd want to make sure everything was cured before you did this next part. Now, what I usually do with mine 
is I begin with um, a coat of varnish and um, I have just some varthane here but you know you can use any kind of gloss varnish and what I do is I just uh, varnish the whole eye that's moving around on me a little bit here I just get the whole eye varnished and I usually do two or three coats of that allowing it to dry between coats and then when I'm finished with that part when that's all dry I usually add some resin and I use UV resin you can um, use UV or regular resin it doesn't matter um, if you remember I did put um, a depression in the eye and so I don't put the UV resin over the entire eye what I do is I just put some resin right around the iris and into that depression there you go so it's not very much resin at all I'm just going to make sure I've got all my air bubbles out of that And then I will go ahead and um, cure the resin and I've got a light here I like this light because it has no bottom and I can pick it up and put it right over the piece I don't have to move the piece and I'll let that cure and um, then I make a decision there are times when I go ahead and I add another uh, layer of UV resin but most of the time one layer of UV resin is fine for me thanks for watching and if you enjoyed uh, making the uh, eyeballs with me then please hit like and subscribe below please follow us on Facebook and visit us at www.completenuttermess.com